Labor hours can be tricky and how you handle them can make the difference between your business being profitable and losing money. In this video, we are going to explain three key things to remember about your labor hours, and then I'll show you where you will want to put them on your profit and loss income statement. Oh, and if you're the only person in your business, you will still want to watch. Many small business owners are costing themselves tons of money due to not understanding their labor costs. Yes, even in a one person business. Now, the first thing you need to remember, there is the employee you and the business owner you. You get paid both as the business owner and as the employee in your business. The employee you is typically paid out of the cost of goods, depending upon the type of business you have. And we will talk about that more shortly. If you are working in the business as an employee, then the employee you must be figured into your pricing as labor hours. The business owner you is paid out only if the business is profitable. And this is called an owner's draw, and it is not part of your labor hours. The second thing you need to consider is independent contractors versus payroll employees. There are independent contractors, those you hire to be helping hands on a job. They will not be on your payroll and often help out on jobs here and there. For example, a handyman or a landscaper might need some extra labor on a job, so they will hire folks for a day or two to help them out. They are not permanent and they come and go. The money paid to these folks is still considered labor hours that will need to be captured in the cost of goods, which once again we will talk about here shortly. Those folks that work for the company on a regular basis will be paid out in the business's payroll. They might be full-time or part-time, but they are given specific job roles and work on a regular basis. These folks might be in your cost of goods, or they might be in your operational expenses, depending upon the type of job they have. Which brings us to the third thing to consider, cost of goods labor versus expense labor. There are different roles your employees will have in your business. For most of you, your labor hours will be captured in your cost of goods. You have heard me mention this a few times already. Remember, your cost of goods is any material or ingredients you use, plus any labor hours you use to provide the service or to create the product. For example, if you are a handyman, you charge for the parts and the labor to do the job. A customer is paying for a person to install a ceiling fan, for example. There is no way to install the ceiling fans without a person. Therefore, there are labor hours involved. Same with pool cleaning. A person has to physically do the cleaning. If you bake cakes, there are ingredients to the cake, but it still takes a person to actually create and decorate the cake. Therefore, there are labor hours that are put into the cost of goods sold. Now, if you have someone that answers phones, does the scheduling, stuff like that, they are not on the job site. Therefore, they are not providing the service, nor do they create the product. Therefore, they are support staff. They are not in your cost of goods and they are an expense to the business. They are still captured in your pricing, but under your expense percentage, not your cost of goods. By the way, if you watch any of my pricing videos, I go into more depth on this and I will put a link in the show notes below for you. Now let's take a look at a profit and loss statement and I'll show you how all three of these will look when you're looking at your PL. Here is a landscaper's profit and loss statement. Don't get hung up on theirs because your business is going to be very similar. Now you might recall the very first thing we discussed was employee you versus business owner you. The employee you will be right here in the labor hours under the cost of goods. Since most of you are the only doer in your business and I assume you're doing all the work, once again, you are still going to be captured right here for those labor hours. However, let's say you don't touch anything in the business other than doing support work. You might capture those hours that you're working down here in owner's wages for working in the business. For example, you are the one that answers the phones, sets up the jobs and everything else, but you're not actually out there creating the product or doing the service. Now, a quick note, I get that single business owners are doing both types of labor. You do not need to split this up. Just know the operational stuff is just part of the joys of being a business owner until you make enough money to pay for someone else to do it for you. Focus on your doer hours as it impacts your pricing the most. Now the business owner you will be able to do an owner's draw if the business is profitable. You will see here this business did make money. So the owner could pull out an owner's draw on top of their labor hours if they wanted to, or they could just leave it in the business for future growth. If the business was not profitable, the business owner would at least have their employee wages that we captured earlier. For those independent contractors, create a separate line for them under your cost of goods. Therefore, you can track them separately. Your payroll employees will have their line as well. 
This will come in handy when you're making a decision if you want to hire someone full-time or part-time into your business because you can just transfer these independent contractor hours into your payroll and know you're still going to be profitable. If you have office staff, they're going to be down here in the operational expenses since they do not install or create the product. So as you can see, labor hours can be very tricky. It is critical that you capture all three types of labor, and it's even more critical that you put them into the right area of your profit and loss income statement. As you dive in deeper into your pricing, capturing your labor correctly can mean the difference between having a profitable month and having a losing month. And as you start to learn your business numbers better, you will be so thankful that you have been capturing your labor correctly. Hopefully you have found this video to be helpful. And if you want to learn more about how your labor impacts your pricing, then here are a few videos where I talk more about capturing your labor hours and how to price correctly to cover the cost of goods and your expenses, as well as ensuring you have money left over for your owner's draw.